Why don't he eat 5,000 calories in the off-season? That would be good. That's a lot of food. And then when he dies, he only have to diet on 3,000. But hey, what do I know? I don't fight in the UFC. Coach Greg, and in today's video, Patty to Batty, he has to drop 50 pounds for his upcoming fight. Patty to Batty, my favorite USC fighter, he competes as a lightweight, has to make 155 pounds off season. He weighs 205. Today's video, we're going over his diet, going to see how many calories does this guy have to eat, what is his diet like, and what can we learn from him? Uh, today, you're going to see exactly what I eat in a, in a day. Protein pancakes with like yogurt and biscoff. And shortly after waking up, up, he consumes 350 calories of protein pancakes. The same meal that Mr. Olympia himself, Chris Bumstead has. The only difference, it's a lot smaller, a lot fewer calories, only 350. But that's his first opportunity for muscle protein synthesis to occur. He's not fasting. He's not going to skip meals and wait till lunch to eat. And so I have to agree, this is an excellent way to start off your morning. And listen, making protein pancakes, it's not very difficult. But there are a host of different ingredients that you can use to combine the best possible pancake for you. Looking for protein pancakes, I have several different recipes in my freaking cookbook. But for now, we're just on the macro, chefs. And I'm looking at these protein pancakes. He's eating in a bowl what kind of protein pancake is that it looks like some kind of goop in a bowl and where's the syrup you need to add in some low calorie syrup gotta make it taste better than last time last night i burnt 908 calories in six miles so walk on for an hour and one thing he does to help burn calories is steady state cardio he went for a walk for an hour says he walked six miles who the heck's walking six miles in an hour is he a speed walker in the olympics Six miles an hour, that is excessively fast. I don't know anyone going for walks, walking six miles. For me, four miles an hour is fast. And it states he burnt 910 calories in this six mile walk. That to me, it's an over exaggeration. Remember, these apps and so on, they're guessing how many calories you burn. I don't believe you can burn 900 calories in an hour of walking. It's a high estimation. But listen, he's still burning calories. It's still going to add to his calorie deficit. It's certainly helping him to lose fat faster than last time. And so I don't know if the tracker was placed on the dog because certainly doesn't look like he's walking fast. Look like he's going for a stroll. Six miles an hour, people. Time it. I dare you. Walk an hour. See if you can go six miles. Compare your speed to what Patty seems to be doing and say, does it look like he walked six miles? Perhaps it's incorrect. Perhaps it's six kilometers. And so in his fight camp, he's saying the last camp was the worst he ever had. He had to lose 20 kilo. That's 44 pounds in seven weeks. And so this time, although he has to lose 50 pounds, he has more time to lose it. It's not that bad, he says. However, I still think it's not ideal. I understand you can't be in contest fighting condition year round, but to gain 50 pounds following a fight, to me, that is an extreme. And it's certainly going to make it more difficult as he gets older. The guy's young, he's in his 20s, but having to drop this kind of weight every single year, it will eventually take its toll. Where I'm at now, I've got like nine kilo to lose, lad. I've done more than that overnight. I've done 8.4 kilo overnight before. I can do nine kilo in four weeks. And so far in this camp, he's already lost 30 pounds. And so he only has nine kilos, about 20 pounds left to go. He says, I've lost 8.4 kilograms in just a single day. And so nine kilograms, that is no problem. But listen, as you diet down and get leaner, it's a lot more difficult to lose that weight. When you're eating a lot of food, holding on to a lot of glycogen, water, and food bloat, you can very easily drop 10% of your body weight in a single day. But as you get leaner, more depleted, holding fewer carbs and water, it's very difficult to drop eight to nine kilograms in a single day. And doing so comes at a price. It will tap into your fitness. You will not have the same aerobic capacity as you would had you not depleted so greatly. The first thing to go when dehydrating is your cardio. Even a 2% loss in water is going to have an effect on your cardio. And so if you dehydrate too much to make weight and you don't properly regain that water, it's going to have a detrimental effect on your performance on fight day. And so he has four weeks remaining to lose nine kilograms about 20 pounds. And so if he loses one kilogram a week, about 2.2 pounds, which of course he can do, he'll only have about five kilos, 11 pounds to lose come way in day. And through dehydration, cutting out carbs, I do believe that losing five kilograms in a day, that that is very realistic. But I certainly wouldn't recommend anyone to go this far into the off season, have to drop 50 pounds to make weight. I've my whole chef been working with me for years, a lot long before the UFC and that. The same night I got given the Paddy the Baddy nickname, 
Patty. And as you see Patty right now, just look at his face. In comparison to when he's 205, he's already lost 30 pounds. He looks a lot leaner. And so I don't think it would make sense to be this lean year round. But is there not a happy medium? Instead of being 50 pounds overweight, why not stay at 30? That would leave him in striking distance if the USC calls and says, hey, you got to take a fight in five or six weeks. He could get ready. But when he's 50 pounds over, if he doesn't have enough notice, he might eventually not make that weight class. And for any fighter, that can be devastating. There's no rocket science to it. It's not hard. Get yourself in a calorie deficit. Why do you think I go so fat? Because I go from eating like 1,500, 2,000 calories a day. And so why is it that Patty gains so much weight? He says it's simple, people. It's calories in, calories out. What I've been saying all along. He says in the off season, he eats 8,000 calories. And when he preps for a USC fight, 1,500 to 2,000 calories a day. That's all he eats, 1,500 to 2,000. And today's meal, just over 1,900 calories. Remember, this is a guy who's doing steady state cardio in addition to training multiple times a day for a UFC fight. And so imagine how many calories guys burn. He's a supreme athlete doing multiple training sessions a day and doing steady state cardio while eating under 2,000 calories. Off season, 8,000. Prepping for a fight, 2,000. And so what would be my advice? Well, I would stop the all or nothing approach. You're either eating anything and everything in sight, 8,000 calories, or starving yourself under 2,000 calories. Why don't he eat 5,000 calories in the off season? That would be good, that's a lot of food. And then when he diets, he only have to diet on 3,000. That would allow him to have more energy year round. And rather than bulking, cutting so hard, it would be a lot easier. But hey, what do I know? I don't fight in the UFC. And that's why it comes off so easy. And he says, well, the weight, it comes off easy. Well, of course it does. When you're eating 8,000 calories a day and you cut it to 2,000, that's a 6,000 calorie deficit compared to your off season. And so given this dramatic deficit of calories, he can quite easily lose several pounds each and every week. And so what he says is this macro chef, who prepares all his meals for him, that he knows the calories and he loves the food. And if you love your diet, it's going to be a lot easier to stick to it. And so what do you think the purpose is of this cookbook? It's delicious foods that you will enjoy. You will not feel like you're dieting. You'll be eating high volume meals that are loaded in protein. Lots of fiber going to keep you full. When you don't feel like you're dieting, as this book will do for you, it's easy to stick to your diet. And so imagine if Patty had this book year round. His off season. Instead of eating 8,000 calories a day, he'd eat 5,000 and be full, satisfied. Instead of going to 205, perhaps he stops at 185. And then when it comes to dieting, instead of starving himself on under 2,000 calories, he continues to eat 3,000 calories. Do you understand what I'm talking about now? The book makes your life easier than friggin' last time. And yes, he has a chef, but if you don't have a chef, you can get the freaking cookbook. And if you do have a chef, you can give the book to them and they can make your food for you. Patty usually goes for a protein granola pot before he trains first thing in the morning. And so notice all the protein this and protein that. Protein granola puffs. Well, great, 300 to 350 calories, but it's a very small serving. There's not a lot of food in that. Not going to keep you full. Paddy, for his lunch, we usually go for a cold option, which is usually a chicken salad wrap. And a chicken salad wrap. Well, that's great, but look at the tininess of that wrap. You're going to be full on that. I want three of those. No idea how this guy can stick to a diet this restricted for so long. But he has a lot of willpower. Consider he's eating under 2,000 calories every single day while training this hard. I couldn't do it. If I lowered my calories to 2,000 in a week, I'd feel starved. I wouldn't be able to handle it. I wouldn't be racing on my bike. I eat 3,500 calories a day. And to me, this is sustainable. And so I would hate to have to binge eat 8,000 calories a day, follow that up by eating under 2,000. So got a barbecue chicken burrito on as well. And the barbecue chicken burrito. The problem is, look how small it is. There's no way you're going to be full. Patty is doing this because he has discipline. He doesn't cheat on his diet. But if you're not as disciplined as Patty, a world-class athlete, and you're looking for something easier, something you can stick to, a diet you can follow for the rest of your life, Get my friggin' cookbook! We've got a chili meatball with facility pasta. Pasta, 470 calories. Little serving. Are you full eating that amount of pasta? Consider in my recipes, you're gonna get double this volume for the same amount of calories. We've got a uh, Wagyu burger, 100% beef, very lean with sweet potato fries. And burger and fries. Does that look like a burger and fries to you? I see a piece of meat, some broccoli, and something that looks like a vegetable. Doesn't look like a burger and fries. 500 calories. Close your eyes. Imagine a burger and fries. 
Open them. Look at this. Does that look like a burger and fries to you? And so to me, I don't know how he follows his diet. The guy's disciplined. Just like Chris Bum said, he can follow any diet for three months, get shredded for the Olympia. But what happens after that? And so if you want a diet you can stick to for the rest of your life, pick up my freaking cookbook. Use code GREG, 10% off. Click the link in the description. He's just very particular in what he likes veg-wise. Doesn't like peppers, but he likes cabbage. And so Patty, he loves certain vegetables, hates others. And listen, they're all good. Pick the ones that you like. Don't care which one it is. Choose one and eat it more than last time. It's not rocket science. Fruits and vegetables, they're low calorie dense foods. Choose the ones you like, ignore the rest. It's okay, you don't have to force yourself to eat Brussels sprouts. Who the heck likes Brussels sprouts when you can like other vegetables and fruits? Doesn't like the uh, bean sprouts. Or no, oh God, onions and bean sprouts, they're an absolute no go. And Patty, who the heck doesn't like onions? What's wrong with you? Onions, we love onions. Weird taste buds in that Patty's head. This is his favorite thing I think he looks forward to. Is a chocolate protein school cake. They're not that high in calories. And Patty's favorite meal, what he looks forward to the most? Chocolate cake, 220 calories. And listen, the cookbook, it's got so many different desserts. The various cakes and mud cakes and so on. You will be amazed. If you have a sweet tooth as I do, you will be more than thrilled of all the delicious recipes in the friggin' cookbook. And he's got his protein cookies as well. But we Five gram of protein in each cookie. And his second favorite, protein cookies. And so if you think world-class athletes don't eat like this, like the meals in my freaking cookbook, guess again. Protein pancakes, protein brownies, protein cookies, protein this and that. What do you think is in the friggin' cookbook? And so his chef is saying Patty eats 14 to 1,700 calories a day, a bikini girl's diet, and he cheats a little bit and sometimes goes as high as 2,000. Think of it. Is that the diet you would want to follow? 14 to 1,700 calories? Oh, but I'm starving. Try being in Patty Pimplet's shoes. Do you feel like people you up? No, I'm three weeks in, no lads all. I'm used to this now, like 1,500 calories a day, it's normal. And so Patty says he's used to this now. He's eating 1,500 calories a day. Let me tell you something. Not everyone can function on that few amount of calories. Not everyone has the genetics of Patty Pimplet. I could tell you that I could not do it. I personally would not be able to function eating 1,500 to 2,000 calories. I simply wouldn't do it. I'd have no energy in the gym. My performance would drop. I would lose muscle, lose strength, and so I would fall apart. But Patty, perhaps his genetics allow him to function within a certain set point. Perhaps as low as 9 or 10% body fat, as high as 20. That's perhaps ideal for him. But if he gets leaner than that, if he diets too hard, eventually it's going to take its toll. But I can tell you, if you're a high performance athlete and you do not fuel your workouts, you're not going to get the progress that you once had. Eating a banana now, anyway, it's probably only about 70 calories. In more like 100, I think, in a medium banana, about 170. That's a tall banana, though, eh? Oh, okay. So you gotta like Patty saying, hey, I'm eating a banana at 70 calories. And his friend is saying, well, it's probably more like 100, 110. So one of the things I really love about the cookbook is it's broken down. The amount of calories for all the items that you're going to eat, fruits and vegetables and so on. It's going to say exactly how much one serving is, which is 100 calories. And so you look up banana, 110 grams, one bean and banana, 100 calories. And if you have a larger banana, perhaps it's more than 110 grams, it's going to have a lot more calories. And so if you're not sure, you're wondering how many calories you're going to get from any food you're eating, you simply look in the cookbook, you look quickly, it's in order from most to fewest, and you take that choice. And so if you're looking for a low calorie fruit, you can look at the top. Watermelon, 330 grams, only 100 calories, and you say, wow, that's a lot. I get to eat three times as much watermelon as I would banana. And so if you're trying to get the lowest amount of calories, you can eat watermelon instead of banana, you eat three times as much. And to the opposite extent, perhaps you're bulking. You want to have something higher in calories. Well, you eat the ones bottom of the list. Some fruits and vegetables have more calories than others. And so you pick the more high calorie dense fruits and vegetables if you're trying to bulk. I don't have to get a microwave for this one, like last one of the day. Paddy the Baddy exclusive. I ripped the excess wrap off as well, like, because I'm weird. Don't need them excess carbs. And same as I would do when I'm eating wraps, I'm ripping off the extra bread. Those are a lot of carbs. It's not add a lot of taste to the meal. And so why not get rid of it? Remember, when you're dieting to this extent, every macro counts. You're trying to have the fewest amount of calories to stay full. And so those extra bread calories, they do add up. And consider he's eating more calories than he thinks in the banana and probably burning off fewer calories he thinks going for a walk. Well, it all balances out now, doesn't it? That's the last one. 
Chocolate protein skill cake, 220 calories. Following the wrap, his favorite, the chocolate cake, 220 calories. And he's continued to watch more fights than last time. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's decided to have his cheat meal today. He's having chicken wings at 90 calories each. And remember, that's a guess. It might be 90, might be 190. We don't know. Who knows how many calories are in the sauce? The sugars, the fats, we just don't know. But when you're eating wings, it's full of chicken skin, very high calorie dense food, not the best choice of food to have when you're on a diet. And so there you have it. Hope you learned something. If you're looking for HTLT sups or the freaking cookbook, Enter code GREG, 10% off. Click the link in the description. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm, and like the video if you liked it. It's a huge favor to me. Please do that if you can. Also, watch one of the two bloops. Follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, IB Pro. And until next time, I am out.